so um, there's been a known issue starting in the uh, 2016 model year. Uh, in fact, it was worse on the 2016 through 18 uh, Kodiak 700 and Grizzly 700 models. Uh, Yamaha changed the air box to pretty much this design right here with this lid and uh, lower box set up. It was different from the 15 back Grizzly 700 models. And the biggest flaw in it was is the ceiling surface of the filter meeting the front wall, plastic wall of this um, air box here, allowing uh, microscopic particles of dust and uh, dirt to get by because it's just uh, just a, not a very not a good design at all. Um, Yamaha boasted it being a toolless design, being able to remove the filter, you know like that and then starting in 2019 they revised this part right here to try in an effort to try to somewhat correct the problem that they had on the 16 through 18 models so they upgraded this gasket here now when I first brought this uh, machine home I greased this foam rubber gasket here uh, so that when it was sitting against this front wall here of this um, air box, that it wouldn't, uh, it hopes to keep the, uh, the dust from getting by it, you know. Um, we're going to be installing the EHS Racing uh, intake mod on this uh, 2019 Kodiak 700 today. Because even though they made these subtle improvements to seal up this in the air box it's steel if you look closely here just since i've had it home i put heat proof grease on this um, foam rubber gasket here and you can kind of see you know i mean the grease is a little dirty you know so it obviously was doing the job of uh capturing some of that fine dust and stuff that was uh, you know trying to make its way around the seal there so basically, uh, if you don't know EHS Racing, you know, they'll, they'll send you a new lower Yamaha air box and you have your choice of either getting a uni foam filter or either a K&N uh, filter. And the way they do it is the way Yamaha should have done it uh, from the factory. They make the CNC billet aluminum uh, flange here and it creates a whole new venturi in which the air is drawn through into the throttle body you know through this intake boot here which i'll get to explaining that in just a second but the main thing that it does is it mimics what other some other um, manufacturers do and mainly uh some very similar to what honda does for the factory where they have a foam filter, cylinder shape. It's got a hose clamp on it that positively seals it to the flange in which it's mounting to. So, you know, there's no way for the dust to get by it because it's, a, I mean, it's, you can tighten it up. And um, I really don't understand why it is that this was, you know, an idea like this coming from Yamaha, you know, a machine like this, that they couldn't have just done this from the factory to begin with. Um, because it, you know, while they claim this is a toolless design, it does not, if you can't whip a screwdriver out and loosen that clamp right there and take this filter off, then I don't think you need to be riding an ATV. So, I don't really understand the need, the need in trying to cheap out on an air filter ceiling design versus doing something like this. This is an old school tried and true method of clamping on an air filter onto, um, you know, on, onto the air box like that. Another thing they do too, you can see here, is they remove this plastic plate here. Up under this plate here is a chamber. and. Uh, you have, on this side, you have your air induction system hose, which is part of an emissions thing Yamaha has, where it draws fresh air from the air box and 
routes it through this tube up and it's a solenoid valve that opens up and goes into the manifold uh, where the uh, header meets the exhaust manifold poured up on the head. It's an effort to reduce emissions. And um, then you have your crankcase breather hose, which comes right off up here on the top of your cylinder head, allows uh, blow by gases and pressure and stuff to bend off the cylinder back in here. Again, they round it back in here because it's an emissions thing. They figure it gets sucked back in, back through the motor. It's going to reburn some of those vapors and stuff that comes off that cylinder head. Anyway, what they they do at EHS race and they take and remove this plate off here. Get this old cheap brown glue off. This pops off. They leave it open. They send you two foam blocks here, a foam air filter media. You wedge down in there. So this is the side right here where the AIS goes in. And then there's also, you will have to transfer over your um, uh, air, uh, it's your air temperature or air pressure sensor, one or the other, I think it's temperature. But anyway, that goes in there and that port right there. And then on this side of the chamber is where the crankcase breather comes in. And again, you have a foam block. Now they ship this to you that the foam filter here is not old, if it's a uni. And the two foam blocks are not old, you know, in shipping, but I've got, you know, foam filter old. I'm gonna take care of that with as you know, the install goes. And the other thing that goes with this too is, as you can see the aluminum billet piece that they make they also include a cut down version of the stock Yamaha boot, intake boot that goes from the front of the air box to the throttle bottom here. So you can kind of see where it goes. And this is the only, you know, one of the few things that you actually have to assemble. They recommend putting a little WD-40 on the inside of this boot, working it up in here, which we'll be doing eventually throughout this install and that little ear on the boot goes between those two uh, notches right there and that's how you know you've got it in the right position. You'll also be reinstalling right here this factory hose clamp from here putting it on this part and then there's another factory hose clamp that will go up at the throttle body end uh, once we get all this put together and assembled. Oh and one other thing I forgot to mention you can't see it right now I'll show it later on when we get this air box out. But you have this, um, it's a little rubber, uh, clear rubber boot or cap slips over this here. It's basically like a drain for your air box. If you get like water or debris in it and it just kind of, I don't know, maybe hangs down about that far, uh, held on by a little clamp there. That will be transferred over to this as well from this factory box. You don't want to leave that you know exposed otherwise you kind of forfeit your whole snorkel you know factory snorkel capability that you have you leave a hole on the bottom of it so the air box uh, you can see here that is held on by screws bolts on each side um, there, one here, one there, and they kind of hold in the frame rails, and then the rest of what holds the box is, is the hose clamp to the front of the throttle bottom here. So <clears throat> basically, you've got to transfer a few things over to this new box and get the whole one out, and then start your reassembly. So that's what we're going to be working on today. And like I said, this is um, kind of cheap insurance to ensure you know the dust stays out of the motor. Uh, even though they, they tried to do some subtle improvement, you know, on the 19, 2019 ups, it's still, you know, it's, a, it's an area of concern. Um, and this will be a much more worry-free thing when you get in dusty situations and stuff. You're not going to be like all paranoid thinking, well, you know, is there dust getting sucked into my engine? You know, and, and everybody knows you get that in there, no matter how new the engine is, it'll wear the rings out and next thing you know it's burning oil. And, uh, you know, 
that you, you've already prematurely took life off of your engine. So that's the whole reason for this, you know. It's uh, I like it better because it's, it's so much like what the Honda uses, where you, you just you, know, you have your phone filter and a hose clamp. You know, and it's uh, pretty straightforward, not not complicated. So we're gonna get to it. So this uh, right hand bolt here, uh, which is down in there, uh, you can kind of see the uh, plastic protruding outward is what the, the bolt actually screws into. Um, it's a little bit of a pain on this right hand side to get to because you can see there, there's you got this plastic here and then these electrical connectors, but did manage to get it off. We'll see how it goes about getting it back in. The one on the left hand side is really easy to get to though. Um, like I said, you know, these are part of what holds the air box in. You got these two bolts. What size are they? 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter. So we'll get these two out and then um, the next thing will be, you know, loosening the clamp up here at the throttle body and then disconnecting these hoses. And, um, wrench small one here to uh, this particular hose clamp here for some reason uses an allen screw instead of a um, regular screw this is the one up here on the end where the throttle body is probably won't have to uh, undo this all the way just do it enough to where it, uh, like that. You can see how how loose it is. That should be. But now we've got that loose. If I need to loosen it up anymore, I will. So you've got to take a pair of pliers and pinch this clamp together and work this hose off. Same way over here, get that hose off. This is your AIS hose. This is your crankcase breather hose. Now there is something up under here um, that goes into this intake boot and uh, goes in here. And I'm thinking, um, just based on what I've seen, and I don't know exactly what it is, <clears throat> but I think this is unique to the 2019 ups. Whatever this electrical, you can see the wire going that way. And you'll be able to see it better because it's up under this frame cross member here must be a sensor or something that goes in here it appears like that this air box here does not use this port here so i don't know if in 2019 they relocated that sensor to the boot instead or what they did that's my guess i don't know for sure that that's the, the type sensor it is all i know is when we got in here started working i realized that this port right here which is supposed to be for that intake air temperature or air pressure, whichever it is, sensor. There's nothing in there. But if you look, the boot they sent has this hole here, which is open into here. And then I see that there is some kind of electrical connector plugged into that. So I'm guessing it's a sensor. Anyway, that will have to go into this new boot that was supplied with the kit. So you can see we've got the lower air box out now. Uh, you know, we've got the two bolts on each side, loosened the hose clamp, and met with the throttle body up, got that off. Uh, these hoses, we've got the uh, crankcase breather one there, the air induction on this side here. Um, even when you get those clamps back, it took a little persuasion to get them to loosen up uh, from this um, these little nipples here um, so anyway this like I, I figured there is this sensor here which this you can see the connector here plugs over top of that and this sensor will have to go inside this new boot they provide and basically you know this boot is is the same as this one it's just been cut down basically the part from uh, part of it I should say that is behind here and then 
this flange piece that opens up in the here has been cut off by EHS. So anyway, like I said, here is that, um, that little plastic boot thing that goes on the bottom of the new air box. You can see from the factory, there's a lot of filter oil that is pulled up into that. Um, so when I take this off, you know, I have to be on the lookout for that. This is held on by this little pinch clamp here. That will be transferring to the new box. So that's that little boot I was talking about drain for the um, air box. This is the sensor here. Uh, took it out of the original intake boot. Uh, it was a little bit tough to get out and uh, finally got it out though of the original boot. So this is the port, the boot they include in which it will go back in. You see it goes in right much easier than it came out. And then once everything's back together, you know, this plugs in like that, which we'll show later on. But right now I need to get that back inside. This here is in fact what I, um, I thought that it was. This is what, uh, it's a sensor for the uh, the air box, the air, I believe it's the temperature. Uh, could be wrong about that. I know the rancher has a sensor that looks just like that. The only difference in it is, is it sticks inside the air box on the rancher. Um, is the only difference, but it looks just like that, kind of a pyramid shape, a cone shape uh, sensor. Anyway, so now we got to work on getting this intake boot onto the new lower air box. All right. So we got the uh, EHS applied intake boot on. Um, it took a little bit of persuasion to get it on, even with the WD-40, but we finally got it on there. Uh, you can see the factory hose clamp has been reinstalled and tightened down in this location. And then the other factory clamp that goes to the throttle body there has been set into place. It's not tight. You want to leave it you know, loose. So at this point, we're going to get the air box into position here. Um, first thing I will want to do is put this end of the intake boot over the throttle body throat there. And uh, then we can work on, you know, getting the rest of it hooked up into place. And also, you know, as we go along along with the other hoses, we'll have to make sure that this connector gets plugged back into this air sensor here. So here we go. Oh, and by the way, if I didn't mention it, that uh, boot has been uh, transferred from the old box to the new one there, drain boot. Okay, so <clears throat> there's really no easy way to get this uh, down in here, especially when this is all one assembly. You just have to kind of turn it and get it the best way you can. And we'll try and get this throttle body root on here. Alright, so um, it took a lot of uh, effort to get this right hand bolt in that holds the uh, air lower air box onto the right frame rail here. Uh, no easy way to do it. Uh, just got to keep working at it. It is, it is extremely tight even after you disconnect these two electrical connectors. I believe it's the voltage regulators behind this panel here. And it just did really hard to get in there. Uh, Scarlett ended up getting her hands in there and even with her hands, um, having tighter dexterity and everything. It still was tough. It took quite a while for her to get it started. But anyway, uh, it's in there now. And this clamp's tight, uh, tightened up here on both ends. Got the air sensor plugged back in. The wiring harness for it goes in between this little holder here. Got the hose clamps back on for the AIS and the crankcase breather. So that's uh, that's pretty much it. It's um, it's a little bit, you know, you gotta have some patience with it. Just not like I said, this 
that's one thing right here alone uh, cost us a lot of time uh, just trying to get that bolt started for the air box but um box lid on. So we got the air box lid back on. Now on the uh, clips, they're a lot tighter um, than they were before. Um, these top two here, you can pretty much get with your hands. These back two here, particularly this one on this side, there's not much room for you to get your finger behind it. So sometimes if you put a little flat blade screwdriver behind it, it'll help pop it on up on there and give you some leverage. But it's all installed now. It's a little bit more of an undertaking than, uh, than it, uh, it seems. So you got to have some patience with it. And, uh, but uh, I'm glad that it's on there now. You know, hopefully it'll do its job and keep the dust out and everything. So. Mm -hmm.